Thank you. Good morning. If anybody's picked up a black hardback songbook and doesn't recognise the pictures, or if your name's not Lorraine, if you can hand it in, because it belongs to Lorraine. So we're just looking for it. So a black songbook, if you can just check around where you are and give it to me or Lorraine afterwards, and we'll get it back to her. If you've still got a harvest envelope from last week or you're yet to pick one up, uh, you can get one off, uh, off John today, or you can just put that into the collection plate when it goes round, and it'll all get added to the totals there. On the notice board, there's a sign-up sheet that's just gone up uh, for members of the 13 plus that have gone away to university. Uh, if you can write a letter uh, to help keep in touch with them, if you sign up, uh, once you just put your name on the board for, uh, for sending the details, and then uh, my mum, Karen Clark, will get in touch with you to give you that address directly to send contact. From someone that went to university, uh, those letters that I used to get from Bernard Cook, the newsletter used to come through, I really felt connected to the core, uh, so it is an important thing uh, so that they know they're not forgotten and still part of our, our family here. Sign up to that if you can send a letter and keep in touch with those people. This evening there's Churches Together, uh, Teesside Churches Together is on again at the Oakwood Centre. If you'd like to attend, uh, the tickets are free but you do have to sign up for it online. Uh, so that's this evening and I believe there is still time to get those tickets. If you want details, you can see me afterwards. Next weekend, uh, the collectors and the band are out at Asdwick Portrack. I think they still need a couple of collectors, so if you see me, Ian Bartle's not here today. Uh, if you can help with that, if you see me after the meeting, we're covering from 10 until 4, collecting. Band's just doing the middle part of the day uh, to, to help, uh, help draw a crowd there at Asdwick Portrack. Friday the 21st is a rearranged date for the first aid training. So if you knew about that the first time round and you knew it got cancelled, it's back on again Friday the 21st and then on the 24th the following Monday we are doing something a little different with our weekly program the food bank and the takeaway meals are becoming an eat in meal we're trying to get people into the building instead of serving them at the door we've got the opportunity to bring them into the building uh, get them in here so we can speak to them have conversations and see what help they need in order to do that we need helpers we need volunteers if we're going to continue the work that we're doing there uh, Sandy's obviously coordinating it, but if you speak to me after the meeting, give me your name, I'll pass that on, and we can get things in motion with that. There's plenty more happening. Uh, there's details on the board for everything running up to near enough Christmas now, so take a look at that after the meeting, and if you want to know anything specific, you can see me after the meeting this morning. The flowers on the piano side from Karen Aitkins for what would have been their 32nd wedding anniversary, so we hope you enjoy those. And on the band side are from Roly for what would have been Frida's birthday tomorrow. So we hope you enjoy those and enjoy your worship. Thank you. It's good to see you this morning. And who said amen? Well done. I agree with that. And uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. We must think this moment, and I know I'm biased, but it's good to see John here this morning. Uh, John vacated Florida the other day. But um, he'll tell you all about it if you go and have a word with him afterwards. But uh, it's good to see John here from Florida. And uh, it's good to see you all. Um, last Sunday, the, it was the Young People's Band that was... Well, I wasn't required, put it that way. So I sat down here next to Lee and Ian. And I made an observation. I saw Sandy pouring this out. And it reminded me of the story of the young curate who'd never given a, a public sermon before and he was a bag of nerves. So he said to the vicar, can you give me some tips? And the vicar said, well, yes, he said, I think the easiest thing to do is to say, you'll notice that when I'm preaching from the pulpit, I'm drinking a glass. Everybody thinks it's water, but it isn't. It's gin. And he said, so take an occasional sip and it'll settle your nerves. So the day came and the, the, the curate did his sermon and afterwards he went to the vicar and said, how did I do? Well, not bad, he said, but... He said, when you think about it, he said, it's best not to tear up your notes, throw them up in the air and shout, up the borough. 
And when you leave the pulpit, use the stairs rather than sliding down the banister. And remember that David slew Goliath. He didn't knock seven bells out of him. So I assure you that this is water. <laughs> and we're going to consider uh, the power of the name of Jesus today. Uh, the authority of the name of Jesus. This is what uh, Paul wrote to the church in Philippi. The authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and everyone will one day submit to his name. In the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and in the demonic realm. And every tongue will proclaim in every language, Jesus Christ is Lord, bringing glory and honor to God the Father. So let's stand. We'll have a few bars introduction and we will sing the whole five verses of, I saw Jonathan pull a face there. He's missing me already. <laughs> five verses of At the Name of Jesus. Thanks, Lee.
was a good sing. Let's take our seats, shall we? And quieten our hearts as again we consider Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Saviour, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living Word. Then I've invited David French if he will come and open our service in prayer. Let us pray. <coughs> Dear Lord, we come before you in praise and thanksgiving as we meet together again in this holy place. We give praise to you for your faithfulness and for your power in our lives. So we worship you in spirit and truth and with grateful hearts. We are conscious of the great heritage we have passed down through the ages. We think of the saints of old who gave their lives because of their faith, their faith in you. And we understand the love, the power and inspiration that Jesus gave them. Dear Lord, come to us this morning afresh. Speak to our hearts such that we are renewed. Bless those of our congregation today, those who have responsibilities the young with their lives before them, those with experience, and particularly Ian and Sandy, our leaders. Bless those who are absent from our core, those who are sick, the weary, the infirmed, the discouraged. We pray for the needs of our country, the wider world, and the Christian hand-to-man, which is being carried out in your name. We pray for the people of the Ukraine, who are suffering from the ravages of war. We pray for those who are enduring hardship because of the energy crisis. Lord, come with your love and power to intervene in the lives and events of today. And may we be anointed and ready to serve the present age. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Now all of those that have been blessed with children are uh, faced with the same dilemma, or have been faced with the same dilemma, and that is what to call the child. Perhaps it's easier these days with scans and such, because if we wish we can find out the gender uh, well in advance. But uh, even though it is easier nowadays, I sometimes wonder if too much gas and air has been administered because I'm going to give you the names of some real children. I spent 15 years as a school governor and these are some of the names of the kids that have uh, come my way. Ocean Towers. Maradona Duck. <laughs> Femi Mattress. This is a hyphenated one. Lilia Mobili Seed, Shady Nicholson, Kira Bandera, then the boys, Billy Buffalo, 
and Kingston Winston Abibi. There's a mouthful. But I like the story about the man who convinced his wife that they should call their child Lenezra in the, on the basis that it was unusual and nobody else would be called Lenezra. And the child was almost walking, I think, before she realized that it was Arsenal backwards. <laughs> so we all have a name. And I would like all those that are under the age of, say, 12, to come to the front and we'll talk a bit about names. I thought you'd be first. Any more? Are you coming, Oscar? No? No? Anyway, come on, Timothy. Right, now, I'm going to talk particularly to these lovely young people that are in front here. And uh, have you thought about it? How many names have you got? I mean, I've got two first names. Raymond Leslie. Has anybody else got two first names? Have you? What's yours? Poppy Madison Maycock. There you go. Amelia. Yeah. Thea. Tia. Tia. It what? It I won't tell you what she said, but it's something to do with Liverpool Football Club. Yes. Next. Amelia Blair. Amelia Blair. Aurelia Blair. Well, that's a lovely name. What about the king, the new king, King Charles? He has got four names. Four names. He's called Charles, Philip, Arthur, George. Now, isn't that strange? When he signs his, his name, he, he runs out of ink, I think, most of the time. But just imagine if everybody was called the same name. Just imagine, for example, that everybody, all the men in the band were called Bob. Okay? Now you can imagine. Let's imagine the chaos. I haven't said it yet. You can't get the stuff. Imagine what would happen if I said to the men in the band, stand up, Bob. Oh, no, look at that. That would be absolute, what a mess we'd be in, wouldn't we? What a, me what a mess we are in. But you know, the important thing is that God knows all our names. He knows, he, he knows if we've got four names, if we've got two names, if we've got three names. He knows everything about our names. So when we say our prayers, we don't have to say, Dear God, this is Charlie or Bob, because he already knows, doesn't he? Now, some of the people in this congregation don't know all your names. But some of them have got your names written on a piece of paper. So Andrew, Andrew Lee, Andrew Lee Maycock, is going to play some music. And while he plays the music, those that have got a piece of paper will hold their piece of paper up and these young people will find their name in the congregation and then bring it back to the front. Can you do that? Have you got that? Right. Lift your names up. Oh, Mrs. Clark's left hers outside. <laughs> right. Let's hear the tune.
another tune. We're not quite there yet. Give it to his give it to his dad. Give it to his dad. Now, what I want you to do is either in your seat or down here, I'd like you to decorate your name. Do you think you could do that? And then when we sing our last song, you can take your coloured names all round the congregation and they can all see what smashing names you've got. Okay? So there's plenty of pens and pencils and what have you. Spread out, look a lot. Take it back to your seat if you want to. Okay. You had enough. He's going to his mum. He's forgotten his pen. Spread out a bit. Don't be frightened. Right now, while while the children are getting on with that activity, um, we've had a change. I don't know whether the uh, have we done the name change. Have we done a name change? No, we can't remember. Louise was going to read the, the scriptures to us this morning, but we weren't quite certain whether a poppy would be well enough to come this morning. So Holly has stepped into the breach. She's going to come here and read to you from the Passion Translation of the scriptures. And she's going to say it in a real clear, clear voice so that he can, even Sam can hear at the back. Um, the Bible reading is taken from Acts chapter 3, verses 11 to 25. Dumbfounded over what they were witnessing, the crowd ran over to Peter and John, who were standing under the covered walkway called Solomon's Porch. Standing there also was the healed beggar clinging to Peter and John. With the crowd surrounding them, Peter said to them all, People of Israel, listen to me. Why are you so amazed by this healing? Why do you stare at us? We didn't make this crippled man walk by his own power or authority. The God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, have done this. For he has glorified his servant, Jesus, the one you denied to Pilate's face when he decided to release him. And you insisted that he be crucified. You rejected the one who was holy and righteous and instead begged for a murderer to be released you killed the prince of life but God raised him from the dead and we stand here as witnesses to that fact faith in Jesus name has healed this man standing before you it is the faith that comes through believing in Jesus Jesus name that has made the crippled man walk right in front of your eyes my fellow Jews I realize that neither neither you nor your leaders realize the grave mistakes you made but in spite of what you've done, God has fulfilled what he foretold through the prophets long ago about the sufferings of his anointed one. And now you must repent and turn back to God so that your sins will be removed. And so that times of refreshing will stream from the Lord's presence. And he will send you Jesus, the Messiah, the chosen one for you. For he must remain in heaven until the restoration of all things has taken place fulfilling everything that God said long ago through his holy prophets. For he has not, for he has, for has not Moses told us, the Lord your God will raise you up, a prophet for, from among you who is like me. Listen to him and follow everything he tells you. Every person who disobeys that prophet will be cut off and completely destroyed. In fact, every prophet from the time of Samuel on, onwards has prophesied all of these days. Yes. 
I, will, I made a bit of a tactical error when organising this meeting because I should have had the singing company before this, but I haven't. So, singing company members, could you amass yourselves? You, you, you're excused for a minute or three. Is that okay? You go bless us with your singing and then we can come back to it. so proud my mind is so unfocused I see the things you do through me as great things I have done and now you gently break me then lovingly you take me and hold me as my father and mold me as my maker
We thank the singing company for the blessing they brought us in the singing of that song. Thank you. You know, when, when the angel visited Mary in uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, we read in verses 31 and 32 the following. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of David. So God insisted on the name Jesus for, the, for a purpose. Because in the original Hebrew, the name Jesus means God saves. And throughout the Gospels, there are references to the power which is associated with the name of Jesus. And uh, three volunteers and a stand-in are going to come and read us some verses. So if Ella, Lily, Amelia and Zach come to the platform, speak through the microphone as loud as you can so that Evie can hear at the back. Okay? Matthew, chapter 8, verse 27. The men were amazed and said, What kind of a man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Luke, chapter 5, verse 17. One day he was teaching, and there were some Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there, who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are to subject to us in your name. So a little later we'll spend an hour and a quarter considering some of those verses. But in the meantime we'll take your tithes and offerings if we may. But we will sing with piano accompaniment, Jesus, what a beautiful name. So we'll remain seated and take up the offering at this time. Jesus, what a beautiful name, Son of God, Son of Man, Lamb that was slain. Thank you. What a beautiful name Son of God, Son of Man Of them that were slain Joy and peace, strength and hope Grace that blows all fears away Jesus, what a beautiful name Amen, amen, thank you. The name Sandy Patty will be known to many of you 
as uh, a gospel singer and uh, she wrote a song um, the chorus of which is very familiar to us um, but the verse says this are there burdens in your heart is your past a memory that binds you is there some pain that you've carried far too long then strengthen your heart and his good news there is a savior and he'll he's forgiven you there is a savior we're going to listen as the band reminders of this tune and uh, arrangement at this point thank you
In the uh, extract from Acts, which Holly brought to us earlier, we read or we learn from Luke, who wrote the Acts. Um, he was also a doctor, by the way. Uh, that the man at the gate of the temple was lame from birth. He was brought to the gate every day so that he could beg. He himself was not allowed in the temple because not being whole, he was unclean. Thank the Lord that things have changed over the centuries. As far as the beggar was concerned, there was nothing special about that particular day. He was doing what he always did, with no expectation was that life was going to be any different for him. He was resigned to his fate, the fate of a lame man in the first century, where his condition was seen by many as being either God's punishment for his son sins or the sins of his parents. So this anonymous lame man holds out his bowl towards Peter and John, who look him squarely in the eye. And again, Luke gives us this detail, which might have been overlooked by others. But why is it important that he looked him squarely in the eye? Have you ever encountered someone that you didn't want to engage with? Perhaps it's a canvasser who wants to know if you've had an accident that wasn't your fault in the last three years. Perhaps it's some beggar with a dog and a cigarette in his mouth, the man, not the dog, and a mobile phone in his hand, someone you just want to avoid. What do you do? You avoid eye contact. I have a theory that People who work in dispensaries at uh, pharmacies. We haven't got any here, have we? Do you work in a pharmacy? Oh, that's all right then. The people, the, the, the people behind the counter avoid eye contact. I think they send them on, co on courses to avoid eye contact. Because you stood there with your piece of paper and nobody takes a blind bit of notice of you. But there we go. That's only my theory. So there's obviously... When Peter says to the man, look at us, there's obviously nothing hiding from him. They invite his attention. Peter says, I don't have any money, which I'm sure came as a big disappointment to the man. But Peter quickly fill, fill, follows it up with, but what I have, I give to you. What I do have, I give to you. And you can't give what you don't have. Sadly, the ineffective of, ineffectiveness of many Christians nowadays is possibly down to the fact that they have nothing to offer but a bit of loose change. The love of Christ can only be shared by a person who has that love in their own heart. And if you do have that love of Christ in your heart, then you've got to share it. Peter goes on, by the power of of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. So Peter reaches down, takes the man by the hand, and lifts him to his feet. We had a, a dear friend who lived well into her 80s, and she had been lame from the age of 12. She played the piano for the songsters for many years. And in my much younger days, I would carry her over my shoulder from a place in the congregation to the piano. Doris's legs were useless completely. They were just useless appendages without any muscle tone or movement. And she would often refer to them as her logs. But I never heard Doris complain, not one bit. She was an encouragement to all of us. The man in the temple gate couldn't move his legs, much less support his weight, even if he had somehow been aided to stand upright. Perhaps he too thought it was futile to complain. But that's the miracle. Instantly, Luke says, his feet and ankles became strong and the man jumps to his feet. And he doesn't just begin to walk, he jumps and goes into the temple for the first time in his life and he doesn't do it quietly. 
He's jumping and shouting praising, praises to God. How many of us, and put your hands up, remember the Sunday school chorus? Silver and gold have I none. Can we sing it? Judith, can we sing it? Oh, I wasn't asking you to sing a solo. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He went walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Not forgotten, obviously. Those who knew the beggar recognized him and they were absolutely gobsmacked at what they were witnessing. Word soon spread and others came running to see what the fuss was about. That's when Peter took the opportunity to preach a sermon, a very powerful one. He starts where the people are, explaining that this is not the work of Peter and John, but of God. Peter then preaches that the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob have glorified their servant Jesus. Peter lays out his case, you handed him over to be killed. You disowned him, disowned the holy and righteous one, and asked for a murderer, Barabbas, instead. You killed the author of life, but Jesus was raised from the dead by his Father God. Peter declares, we are witnesses, and followers of Jesus have seen it all, including the ugly scenes when the crowds turned on Jesus. He then states, it's in Jesus' name, and the faith that comes through Jesus that's given this complete healing to this man, as you can all see. He goes on, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out and the times of refreshing may come from the Lord. This is a great story, but what does it all mean? Well, it could mean that given a choice, we prefer the past to the future, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. In other words, the God of our ancestors. After all, it was God who did great things for us. It was God who in the past chose great leaders for us. And it was God in the past who had great plans for us. But the whole story of Jesus' life, his life of ministry and of Pentecost, is behold, I am making all things new. The new certainty does have roots in the past. But that which God is doing now has a different shape than anything before. And that is why we now have a saviour. It could result in our making wrong choices. The people of Jerusalem disowned the Messiah in favour of Barabbas. But haven't we heard bad, of bad choices before? How about the Garden of Eden? How about mankind's rejection of Noah? How about the Tower of Babel or Israel's rebellion against God on any number of occasions? And today, we still make the wrong choices out of fear, anger, selfishness, stubbornness, and willfulness. Not much has changed over the centuries. And the, again, that is why we need the Saviour. It could mean that we are in it could mean that we thought we were in charge. What was it Peter said? You killed the author of life, but God raised him up. Even mankind's most willful act, the killing of Jesus, is undone by a God who loves us, and therefore the invitation to change is still open to all of us. We're still given the chance to turn around, change our minds or repent. Whichever way you want to say it, it still comes out the same. We choose God's future and not our past. We make the right choice for once, not the wrong one. We see God at work and acknowledge His sovereignty and love 
and we act in the faith given to us by the same Jesus and turn to God and new life-giving ways. And that's why we have a Savior. And that's why He's available to us all. And finally, this. God gave the lame beggar a new life. No doubt he was totally changed. No more begging. No more, no more being left outside. Going forward, he was able to live a normal, healthy life. But what else did God do through the power of Jesus' name? He, he didn't just heal the body. He was truly blessed in his heart. He praised God. He had an inward change as well, which is arguably more important than the long-form mobility. To heal the body is one thing, but to heal the heart and soul is far more important. I ask the simple question, are you looking for healing today? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, we read, For no one is empowered to lay an alternative foundation other than the good foundation that exists, which is Jesus Christ. I've asked Eleanor and Libby to sing to us, and they've chosen to sing the song on the rock. And I think that will, that verse, for no one is empowered to lay an alternative foundation other than the good foundation that exists, which is Jesus Christ. I think you'll find that fits, it, that fits in quite nicely with the words that they're going to bring to us. Thank you. And then when they've sung, Gillian is going to pray with us. Don't give 
give up. Stand tall unto the end. Holding, defending the faith without ceasing. Firm on the rock you shall stand. When I stand on the rock, I can see more clearly. When I stand on the rock, I feel peace. When I stand on the rock, I am never alone. When I stand, when I stand, when I stand on the rock, when I stand, it is always on the rock, on the rock. Have you finished doing your drawings and things? Yep. Right, well, we're going to have a song. And I want you to march round the hall showing everyone your beautiful work. Do you think you could do that? Okay. If you go up that one, if you go up that one, come across there, down this one, across there, and up that one. Is that too complicated? Libby. Libby, do you want to... Will you lead the, the throng? Up that one, down that one, and up that one. You follow Libby. Timothy's had enough. He's lost his... There we go. And the rest of us will sing together. There's no other name but this name. We've got, have we got to stand or will you see the... Is it better to stand or what? What? Stand? If you want to stand, stand. If you don't, don't stand. Okay. Thank you, band. Here we go.
done, young people. And you, you timed it just well. We didn't have any more verses left. Let's have a benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.